Alrighty, everybody, welcome to our final webinar of the week. Thank you guys for joining me today. It is Thursday, October 4th. So where are we for the week, guys? Let's do a little bit of a recap. I think Thursdays from now on, I mean, I usually tend to recap on Thursdays anyways because it's our last webinar, but I'm going to put a little bit more emphasis on the recap side of things for the week. Obviously, looking for other trades if we can, but also recapping and just giving you guys an idea of where I stand, you know, how I feel about the markets and that type of thing. Kind of just like my normal outlook. But anyways, main thing, guys, big, big thing in your brain, big thing in your notes, big thing just in general is know that in the morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, so when it's 8.30 a.m. in New York and it's 5.30 a.m. in California, there's going to be NFP, all right? We're going to see average hourly earnings, NFP, and the unemployment rate all released at the same time, okay? This is the reason why I said inside of Slack is that I'm not going to give out any more signals on any U.S. dollar pairs. If I see something, if I see a setup, if I see maybe, for example, like an opportunity to compound our GBP Swiss franc trade that's currently about 200 pips in, or over 200 pips in profit, um, then I will, but I'm not interested in getting into any new trades before the end of the week on any pairs that have to do with the US dollar. So that means gold, Euro USD, USD Swiss franc, pound dollar, USD CAD, AUD USD, NZD USD, dollar yen, you know, all of those normal pairs that we tend to trade, none of those are going to get traded. We're going to be looking at like pound Swiss franc um, and, and some of just the other different majors that we trade. So just understand that. Now, if you guys are new, you might not know what I recommend with NFP or, you know, you might not know what to think with NFP. Uh, first, I'll just give you a little 30 seconds on it. And then, but first, before that, I'll give you guys my opinion. So I'll tell you guys what all three of these are very quickly. Just give a, a quick breakdown, but know that I do not condone trading any high impact news. Okay. Now, there is a time and a place when you can have a position over the news, right? Let's say, for example, we know NFP is tomorrow, and let's say we were in a huge short on Euro USD. Let's say we've been short on Euro USD since, you know, like 116.50, okay? Like, like up here or something, right? If you're in that much profit, right? If you're in like 150 pips profit on a US dollar pair, then you definitely want to have your stop loss to break even, but it's appropriate to hold that trade over the news. So, I mean, that would be an example of, you know, not purposely trading the news, but holding a position over news. But I definitely do not recommend guys five minutes before NFP comes out, be freaking out, asking all your friends, what's it going to go? What are you guys thinking? What's it going to do this and that, you know, searching online a million articles and putting in a high position lot size right before it comes out and just praying it goes in your direction. I promise you guys, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt, right? I obviously have been there because I'm explaining it. You guys know, you guys probably know the exact same feeling that I'm talking about, right? And it's not, it's not a fun feeling, right? It's just not a good feeling being stressed out and knowing that you have a lot of risk on your account. And it's just, it's just not good in my opinion. So, and, and, and that can, you know, that could, that could change down the road. Um, well, I guess what I mean by change down the road is, if you're the main thing I just want to emphasize is like in the future, if you guys see that we're in a trade and we're up a bunch of money, like let's say for example, we're in pound Swiss franc right now, right? We're up 200 pips on this trade. If tomorrow morning, instead of NFP for the US dollar, if there was some, let's say quarter over quarter GDP coming out for the pound or a month over month CPI report or something like that, you know, something that's still high impact, I would hold the trade. I'm not going to close the trade before the news because it has the potential to move in our direction, right? And continue to move into profit. But we're also giving it enough breathing room that really no matter how bad a GDP was for the pound, it's probably not going to bring it down 200 pips. You know, we usually don't see that type of move. And that's things that you guys should probably like go and go and look at. That's actually something I could probably brush up on as well. But there are resources that you can find guys. Maybe I'll actually you know, that's what I'll do is I'll, I'll share some of these resources with you guys, but you can actually go and see the historical moves. You can go and actually see, you know, for NFP on the past 12 months, you know, what the average pit move is, you know, and okay, so now we know based on this report that, okay, for the past 12 months, the average move for NFP is 100 pips. 
right? So that way, you know, if you're in it on a trade on, let's say Euro USD and you're up 150 pips on a trade and you don't know if you should hold that trade over NFP, well, go and look at the data, guys. Numbers don't lie. Um, and you can go base off of that. So guys, there's, there's always something that you can do to um, extend your learning. But really quickly, average hourly earnings is, um, or just to give you guys a breakdown of everything, it's, I mean, the, the textbook definition is the change in the price businesses pay for labor, excluding the farming industry. So all of these are excluding the farming industry. That's why it's called non-farm payrolls. It's how many people have been added to payroll companies in the past month, excluding, it's, it's everything but the farming industry. That's why it's called non-farm, okay? Um, and then we have non-farm, that's exactly what I was seeing, change in the number of employed people during the previous month, excluding the farming industry, right there, okay? And obviously, a high number is good, that shows job growth, that shows low unemployment, because that's job growth, and job growth, I mean, I shouldn't have to explain this type of stuff, guys, but you should know that, obviously, if you are running a country and there's jobs that are being added, then that's probably good for your country, right? That shows businesses are growing. That shows revenue is coming into businesses. It shows just good economical growth overall. It's a very, I mean, it says it right here, um, FF notes, Forex factory notes. This is vital economic data released shortly after, after the month ends. The combination of importance and earliness makes for hefty market impacts, said why traders care, job creation is an important leading indicator of consumer spending, which accounts for a majority of overall economic activity. So these, what, these are the fundamentals, guys. If you know, when we're talking about technicals and fundamentals, these are the fundamentals and these are the things that you want to learn about. You know, have, have, take some time to learn about. Unemployment rate, pretty self-explanatory, right? It's a percentage of the population. Um, or known population that is unemployed for the, or for the past month. So the unemployment rate for last month is supposed to go down 3.8% from 3. And these are, guys, we're, these are really historical. You guys are wondering why the dollar is doing so well. The U.S. economy is actually doing very, very, very well right now. Um, and that can be seen when you, when you look at some, and I mean, you don't have to look at a ton of data to be able to see that you can take something just like unemployment rates. For example, you can come onto Forex factory. You can click this little folder right here and you can see the history and you can go back. I think they go back like 10 years or so, actually a little bit more than 10 years. Maximum allowed is back to July of 2007. And you, do you guys notice a trend that actually on this entire, out of every single one of these months between from this month, right here, right now, guys, in the past 11 years, we are at the lowest, intre or lowest unemployment rate in the U.S. history in 11 years, in the past 11 years. So if you're wondering, why is the economy, you know, why is, why is the dollar doing so well? Because the economy is doing well, guys. Unemployment rates are low. Job growth is high. Revenue and earnings are up for many large companies, you know, companies that are you know, uh, like blue chip stocks that are generally have billion dollar market capitalizations and higher. Those are doing very well. So it's, it's a combination of a lot of things, but I'm just trying to show you guys that you can actually see a trend, like based on how the economy is like, let's, let's rewind back into 2007, right? Everything was great. Everybody was getting approved for houses. You know, everybody was having, you know, just having a ball, you know, everybody perceived that the economy was good because unemployment rates were low. And then we saw the housing market collapse and you slowly start to see creep, creep, creep all the way up. And look at it as we went into our recession, 2008, 2009, 2010, and we got to November 6th of 2009, we had a 10.2% unemployment rate. That is crazy, guys. If you guys don't know the population of America, it's a little bit over 300 million people. So obviously it was a, probably a different population in 2009, but if we just take 10%, guys, that is 10% of an entire population that is unemployed. That's huge, 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 that's terrible. And then we can see, right, as the recession ended and our economy has, has definitely, without a doubt, recovered over, you know, since the housing market crash, we see, you notice a trend over time, 2013, 2014, interest or unemployment rates are going lower and lower and lower and lower. And what's happening at the same time, guys, the dollar, um, well, the dollar was getting stronger, but what I mean is specifically this year, we're seeing or in this year and last year and the year before last, they've really been hiking interest rates, 
right? And as you see the, the interest rates go up, which is supposed to be good for the economy, we also see unemployment rates go down because it's forecasted to be good for the economy. So there's a, there's a lot of, of factors, guys. Um, I don't want to bore you guys for too long, but yeah, that's, that's my outlook on NFP. I mean, I don't have a directional bias for NFP. Don't trade NFP. Um, so very quickly, let's, let's go ahead and recap the trade that we're in. So pound Swiss franc, I'm, we're just leaving it alone for now, guys. Our stop loss is at break even. Some of you guys messaged me, ask you, David, should we put a trailing stop loss? Should we move our stop loss a little bit higher um, you know, to protect profits? I don't think so. I, I, I mean, I'm personally choosing not to, right? I mean, I'm, I'm just one human being, guys, making one judgment, human judgment, okay? So don't, you know, I'm not a perfect trader, right? There is a, there's a good, I mean, not a good chance, but there is, there's always a pro po possibility of price. You know, I don't think that this is going to happen. I think we're going to continue moving up much higher and keep going higher. I don't think we really have anything to be worried about, but there is a, a, a chance of it moving down. So I would prefer it to... Um, and if it does come down, I think it might come down to like this zone, our previous kind of resistance area. We've got the EMA right there. We've got some fib level right there as well. So, you know, we, but we've, we've seen it happen a couple times, right? We got in, spiked up, right? Perfect entry, came back down, scaring people, right? Went shot way back up, made new highs, right? Came back down went back up, retested our highs, came back down a little bit, and then over last night, pushed up higher, okay? So you can see like multiple times where like people, you know, if you're scared or, you know, if you, if you don't use proper risk management, then it can be really, it, trading can be an emotional roller coaster. You know, if you throw, you have a thousand dollar account and you throw one lot on this, then it's going to be really emotional as it's riding up and down. You know, you're celebrating these highs and then in 12 hours when it's pulling down, you're like, oh man, you know, but and it, and it shouldn't be like that. It should just be like, Literally, guys, obviously, we have to care about our money. We have to care about our profits. But you should have little to no emotion attached. Like, I don't, I don't, like, when I wake up in the morning, guys, I'm, I don't rush and check my phone and, and check the trades and see how it's going, right? Like, literally, sometimes I'll forget about a trade. Like, I'll forget to check on it. You know, like, it's, it's a nighttime or something, and I want to check on it before I go to bed or whatever, and I, I don't. I check on it the next day because there's such little risk involved that there's no need to be emotional with the trade. If I know that the most I can lose is 2% or in this case, the most I can lose is 0% because my trades at break even, then what's the point of like stressing and staring at the charts when we don't care about what it's doing right now. We care where it's at in, you know, a couple weeks, a couple months from now. So, um, yeah, anyways, uh, I'm still very much so biased to the upside. I think we're going to see, I mean, going into next week, I mean, this is just moving very nicely guys. I told you guys yesterday, that we had a super, super nice formation right here, right? We had this previous resistance. We broke through that resistance and also the EMA. We came back down and retested that resistance, rejected off of it once again with a strong bullish engulfing candle and now taking off, right? Le finally leaving this zone, this order block. So, I mean, it's what, what else is there at this point, right? I mean, if we mark it up, we go ahead and introduce everything that we have on here, right? The next level of resistance is going to be our former support that's going to come into this zone. So somewhere around here, which also happens to be the 38.2% retracement level, we're probably going to see, you know, maybe price not take off as quick. We might see it come up to this zone, maybe come down a little bit, maybe come up, break, maybe, you know, consolidate for a little bit, maybe even like spike back down and come back up. You know, so much can happen. We, I don't, I don't want to just like predict because anything can happen guys, but I'm just trying to give you guys an example of why, just to like forget about the trade, just let it let it do its thing. We're getting paid in swap to our rollover for holding it overnight in each day. We're actually getting paid. You know, sometimes they charge a commission when you hold your trades each day, but this pair is actually paying us, and we've gotten paid more than double our commission that you pay the broker for entering the trade, which is awesome. We're gonna catch so much swap and so much positive rollover on this trade. Okay, so anyways. Um, honestly, guys, the dollar index, gold, euro, USD, USD, Swiss franc, pound dollar, dollar yen, AUD, USD, and NZD, USD, and USD CAD. I am not actually interested in sharing any opinions or analysis with any of these pairs because it doesn't matter what, how, what I say right now. I could say, you know, oh, it look, obviously you look at euro, USD, looks bearish. You look at gold, it looks bearish. You look at USD, Swiss franc, it looks bullish. You look at dollar yen. 
looks bullish. You look at AUD USD and NZD USD, they both look bearish, right? So I could say, you know, they look bearish. It looks like over the next day they should go down, but then we have NFP and an NFP comes out really bad for the dollar. Um, it's actually forecasted to be bad for the dollar. Um, then we're going to see, you know, a little, little bit of reversal of what I, what I've said before guys, our Friday reversal, our Friday manipulation days where even though everything looks good to the downside and everything looks nice and I really want to sell Euro USD, the manipulation on a weak NFP could make Euro USD come back all the way up to this wedge before finally dropping, right? We still are not home free yet. We still have not really broken through this major support zone. Okay. So again, like I said yesterday, like I'm not interested, I'm not worried about, you know, uh, catching a 15 pip scalp to the downside before NFP. I'm more focused on waiting for that big setup so we can take a short somewhere around this area and catch a thousand pips all the way down to our 2017 lows. Actually, I'm pretty sure that's like all time lows. Not okay. Not all time lows. That would just be like lows going back to December of 2002. Okay. And I do believe we're going to get to that point. I do believe we're going to get to these lows. I think we're going to go much lower. I think we're going to go towards parity. I think Euro USD is going to head towards 1.00. And I've said that for months and months and months now, guys, that my overall bias really ever since this move right here, guys, ever since that move, that created a bearish bias on Euro USD. And then obviously having a nice bear flag and not seeing it come into anywhere of this zone on a retracement, especially early on, that's huge, huge red flags, good red flags that in the future, long-term is still downside, guys, okay? So when it comes to trading, I care about the big picture, guys. I don't, I don't, I'm not caring about the small picture. And I don't wanna sound hypocritical, guys. Obviously, market conditions change, okay? Two months from now, you might see me do, you know, there might be a good week to scalp and you see me, I take, you know, 10, 15 trades in a week. We've done that before guys. We've done that many times before where it's been a really hype week and things happen and we're in and out of trades and we're scalping this and that. So take what I say with a grain of salt, guys. I'm not trying to say like swinging in, in the higher time frame is the only way to go. If you become, if you can master and become very skillful with these higher time frames and understanding market structure and be able to distinguish price action and confirmation, you can apply these same techniques on the lower time frames. But you'll find it's a lot easier to at least get started with trading and it's a lot easier on your mindset and your psychology and everything if you start to just focus on the higher time frames and then work your way down to the time frames, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. So that, that someone that goes like straight to the five minute and 10 minute, you know, 15 minute time frame, it's just, just too wild, you know, too much emotions. We're human beings, you know, it's, it's just too, too much, too emotional with that. So I rather work on the higher time frames, quality over quantity. I say, who's going to be laughing when this hits our take profit and we make 10% on a single trade, right? When some people aren't even making 10% on their money in an entire year. So that's, that's what I have to say to anybody that, you know, wants to criticize me for not giving enough trades or anything like that. I'm not in this for the amount of trades I take. I'm, amount, I'm in this, it's not, cause it's not about the amount of trades you guys take. It's about your growth at the end of the day, your long-term growth. Okay. Um, so yeah, so all USD pairs, I mean, like I could say like gold, I am looking for some potential shorts going into next week. Just remember what I said, guys, like, just cause you just heard me say I'm looking for shorts on gold. Doesn't mean go and place a sell on gold on your chart right now. Like wait until next week. Definitely. But gold is really bearish right now. It's definitely had a, a very difficult time. Um, making a, seeing a move above 1200. I believe the pressure is to the downside and we're probably going to see 1150 reached. Now, what I don't like is this move right here. We have this, this big push. This is like a, a big morning star at the bottom of the chart. So that's a big bullish confirmation. And then we kind of have this fake out to the downside right here and price moving back in. Um, I don't, I don't like that at all. It's a good chance that we might see a big fake out like price spike above this 1210 area and actually do break these highs. That way it stops out people that sold early, maybe people that sold the down here and had their stop losses just above the highs, like just a kind of a classic breakout trade. And then of course, triggering buy stops, right? Pending orders, right? People that have, you don't, don't forget about pending orders, guys. You know, people, 
a majority of the market, you know, does trade with instant executions where you enter, you know, instantly. But a lot of people have areas where there's, there's a load of orders where it says right here, you know, at 1210. Actually, matter of fact, guys, let me show you something very quickly. Um, it's from Oanda. It's like an order block tool, order book. And this is, this is some good stuff. You guys, um, Forex order book. So before, hold on, while this is loads, let me just give you guys a disclaimer that these are just orders on Oanda. It's not like every single trader in the entire world and where all their orders are. Okay, it's just for people that have accounts with Oanda. I obviously don't really care. We don't have accounts with Oanda. I don't recommend Oanda as a broker. They are huge, huge um, dealing desk, but they are not non-dealing desk. But anyways, just what I'm trying to show you guys is these, you can find these. Okay, so we go to gold. We go to XAU. Oh, maybe it's okay, gold right here. Gold, non-cumulative. And look at this, guys. So you can see where price is at right now. Okay, 11.9905. And everything right here, all these orange that you see right here are sell limits. Okay, people that have sell orders to sell when the market gets to a certain place. You notice how there's such a huge amount right below 1300 a huge amount right around 1275, a huge amount right around 1225, okay? And then there's buys. These are buy stops. So these are people that are buying when price gets to this area, okay? Down to the left over here, bottom left, is sell stops. So people that are gonna sell when price gets down to a certain price. And to the bottom right right here, these are buy limits, Okay, these are people that are going to buy when price gets down to this area. There's a bunch of buy orders at 1150. There's a bunch of buy orders at 1175. Okay, so I know this is just like one little thing, guys. Like I don't, I don't use this obviously because it's just one broker. It's just something I'm just trying to show you guys how much you might be missing out on, like if you don't have this type of like knowledge, right? Like this stuff is out there. This is the way the markets work is by orders, is by orders that need to be filled, buy orders that need to be filled by banks and sell orders that need to be filled by banks. And for, for the, those moves to happen, for example, we saw it on GBP Swiss franc. We saw it right here on GBP Swiss, Swiss franc. And if you guys remember on my webinar, I literally explained this exact manipulation, okay? I explained and what we're talking about is right here. We're talking about this bull flag, okay? Now, keep in mind that if we see this bull flag, we see this consolidation, we see a nice buy in this area. Guys, if we see this, and I only have four going on five years of market experience, don't you think somebody, I've said this before, guys, don't you think that somebody with 20, 30 years experience or every other like bank in the world that trades Forex can probably see this same setup on the charts? probably right so you wonder why right when you buy sometimes it goes against you right when you sell other times it goes right against you guys because forex is the most manipulated markets in the world and if you cannot understand the manipulation then you're never going to be successful if you're trading on your own okay yes there's things like we talk about trend lines support and resistance those all price action have a huge thing to do with it but Underneath all that, there is the underlying factor, which is manipulation. And just what I'm trying to get across right here, guys, just to, just to make my point clear, is that, okay, let's say you're a bank, okay? Let's say you're a bank and you want to place a buy on, on the pound, right? You want to buy the pound and you want to buy it, you know, for whatever, $200 billion or whatever, right? That's, that's the position that you want to open on it. Or let's say, you know, 10,000 lots, okay? You're a big bank, you're going to open 10,000 lots. For your order to get filled, there has to be enough sellers for your order to get to, for your for your buy order to be placed. It's called liquidity, guys. And if it that doesn't happen, then slippage happens. Okay, we aren't going to get into all that right now, but I'm just trying to share with you guys the manipulation side of things. And so we see this upside move right now. There's not go back to what we just said, right? If they want to buy, right? We don't know this move is going to happen. Banks know this move is going to happen, right? Because they're going to they're going to take a buy. But for, the, like I just said, for their buy to work out, they need enough people selling, okay? So what do they do? They, they give people 
this this little bit of free money, right? They 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 see this bull flag. They let people run with this money, okay? But you see, what happens right here is you see this big push down. And what happens in this area is two things, okay? Everybody that had FOMO in this area, fear of missing out. So everybody that missed out on the buy down in here because of FOMO, they bought up here because this market structure, look at this resistance. If you're just looking at support and resistance, right? If you have nothing else on the charts, well, as a trader, you might say, okay, well, boom, we broke through this resistance. We retested this resistance. So this is a great buy order right here. You know, right where this, right where this red is. I'm going to buy right here. I'm going to take this all the way up and I'm going to set my stop loss right down here. You know, you see that manipulation guys. Okay. So what do you do? Retail trader, they buy in this direction. Boom. Oh, I'm in some nice profits. Hopefully they set their stop loss to break even, but most likely if their stop loss is all the way down here, they aren't going to move their stop loss to break even, or at least with my strategy, I wouldn't move my stop loss to break even until I'm at least one to one in profit, right? So somewhere up in this area, right? We never get up that high. So what happens? Price moves down, crashes all the way down. And the first thing it does is it stops out these guys. So all the guys at the top, it stops them out. And then and then it's, it's a two-part effect. It's a win-win situation for the market makers because not only does it just stop out those people, but everybody that missed this sell, everybody that had FOMO on shorting here, you, you guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about too, right? You see the news, you see it drop. You're like, man, those, those two, four hours are so bearish. It's got to keep going, right? So you place a sell right here and then what happens? Boom, right? And then you're sitting Friday crying to yourself because you blew two accounts. You're wondering why you can't understand the markets and why it just never goes in your direction. When if you stopped focusing on just this lower time frame, and we, we did get stopped out here, I believe, guys. We took a trade. We did try to catch this early trade. So this was, this was completely fair for us, right? Because we were not in that, in that basket of being FOMO'd out on this, right? We had some good analysis. Obviously we, we got stopped out on this one last one hour candle that spiked down, but I'm trying to explain the FOMO for the greater part of the market, right? And th this is, this is all I'm trying to say guys is this is why it's good to have trading discipline is because you notice that when we got stopped out here, right? You got, some of you guys might not have been here for this, but we did, we took a buy on, on pound Swiss franc. I think somewhere right around here, went through a long, 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 long consolidation, almost got stopped out. You guys see these three candles right down there? Those three candles almost stopped us out, but they didn't. And then this one candle right here, literally that one blue candle that you see with the wick right there, that stopped us out, all right? But what I'm trying to emphasize is that I didn't get emotional about the trading. I didn't, didn't enter again up here as a, what we call a revenge trade, right? Oh, I didn't, I didn't get this trade, but this has got to go in my direction, right? How many of you guys have ever gone through that before, right? So understand that and then un just understand the manipulation, guys. It's as simple as that, okay? So huge stuff and, and, and that's what we're talking about, guys. So when everybody sells in this area, so just to kind of tie it together, when we're talking about those people that sell right here, this right here is fulfilling the orders needed for this buy to play through. Okay. And now, and then we see the real move. Okay. So understanding manipulation in a nutshell, guys, if you guys got value from that, there's, there's, 10 of you guys in here right now, no excuses. I want to see at least five of you guys right in the chat right now that, you, that you're understanding this. Just give me like a yes or that it's understanding. I just want to make sure that what I'm saying is understand. You guys are understanding or else I'm just talking here for 30 minutes for no reason. If I don't get any feedback. I'm going to wait. We got four people. Need one more person not going. Okay. There we go. Cool. I want to be more interactive guys. I want to just keep, you know, keep you guys. I, I want to, 
want to like level things up a little bit, you know, have some more activity. It's, it's so hard. I feel like it's like kind of contradicting because it, uh, one side of things trading is supposed to be boring, right? It's, it's not supposed to be super hyped up, but at the same time, I want to create like a community, right? I want to create like a, like, I don't know if any of you guys talk to each other or have any like little groups, you know, inside of Slack or whatnot, but, but guys, you know, we're all friends here. Everybody has the same goal, right? Every single one of you guys in here have the same goal. You guys wouldn't be here if you weren't trying to make money and improve your financial situation. So, you know, collaborate with people, you know, it doesn't have to be a lone journey. And I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to build a community, but it's also hard at the same time because you need a lot of activity and a lot of hype to build a community, which is kind of contradicting to what Forex is even about. So try to find a good, a good middle ground, but I hope you guys, I hope that right there was enough learning for you. So, I mean, I think that that's pretty much it for the day, guys. Um, uh, again, I'm not really interested in trading um, the, and any us dollar pairs, I will definitely be looking for a re-entry on GBP Swiss franc. Okay. I don't know what it's going to look like yet, but it's probably going to look like something retesting these EMAs kind of like what we did here, you know, something, some sort of like strong pullback, good rejection, something like that. I'll be looking for, um, another entry. Cause I know there's some of you guys that just joined and you didn't get this trade. And, and I know it kind of sucks when you see that it's like, Oh, why me? Why did I miss this 210 pip trade already? But there, there's more guys, you know, don't, don't have that mentality. There's, there's always going to be plenty. Um, and then the rest of the markets, Oh, Euro GBP. I will look at, I am watching Euro GBP. This is a pair that I'm interested in because, um, even with NFP tomorrow, right? That's, this is not the U S dollar. It's the Euro versus the British pound. So, um, I mentioned yesterday I was expecting downside on a break of this 50% retracement level as well as we had kind of got a little bit of a double bottom going on, but it was kind of rejected once we got kind of invalidated when we got that bearish engulfing candle, right? Not, not a bullish confirmation for a double, a double bottom. So we did break looking in hindsight, right? If you were here 24 hours ago, I did say this would go down and it did go down and Right now I'm looking for that structure, right? I'm looking for that structure. Maybe we'll get some sort of retest and then maybe like a bearish engulfing candle, something like we did right here. Like that would be a very nice move, right? Where you see price move down, right? A lot of people are early, right? How many people like would sell in this sort of situation just because they're greedy, right? They see it go down. They see price action go down and they hear me on the webinars that it's going to go down, but you aren't waiting for the confirmation, right? That confirmation, boom, moved up a little bit. We got that nice bearish engulfing candle. And then boom, could have sold and moved to the downside. Obviously, I just looked at this pair yesterday for the first time. So when I opened up this chart for the first time yesterday, price is already down in this area. So obviously I missed that or we would have taken that. But just to give you an example, that's, that's what I'm looking for um, in regards to, I mean, also just an example over here shows you a bearish, or I'll circle it better, bearish engulfing candle, right? On a pullback, right? You have a, a move down. And then a strong correction, bearish engulfing candle. Um, this is this whole thing is pretty much a big move down, but you do have this little bit of like a channel, and then breaks and then moves lower. That's a little bit of a tricky one, um, but I do like how we move lower right here. A little bit of a correction, bearish engulfing candle, and then move down quite a few pips. All right, it's and, and that's that's a nice move, right? Because with something like that. We're going to sell right at the close of the four hour candle. We're going to put our stop loss just above the highs of that zone. We're going to want to get the tightest stop loss that we can without breaking our rules. Okay. And so that would be get it as tight as you can with just above the highs, of this zone, right? You have that high right there. You have this high right here, this high right here, this high right here, a bunch of little couple four hour candle highs. So, you know, you could call this like 30 pips, 30 pips stop loss. And then we need to have at least a one to two risk to reward. So if we want to have a one to two risk to reward, um, we'd be almost hitting, like it would have been just a couple pips off of take profit. So, so this is an example guys of what we call an intraday trade. Okay. GBP Swiss franc. That's obviously a swing trade, right? We have a 220 pips, 200 and like 28 pip or something like that stop loss. And we're looking to make a thousand pips, right? This is a much different trade. We would be risking 30 pips to make 60 pips, all right? Or some trades we risk even less than that. We risk 15 pips to make 75 pips and have some crazy good risk ratio, right? But if I, if I would have taken that trade, by the way, I would have had this as my target, my original target. So a 2.87 risk reward. So risking about 30 pips to make like 87 pips about. And this trade would be in profit. 
with a stop loss at break even, right? And then potentially looking for entries to uh, to, to compounds. I, I, I really hate showing examples in hindsight, guys, because anybody can be a market genius if they're just picking the perfect examples on the tra on the charts. Because that's one thing too, guys, if you're, if you're following like a guru or somebody that's always like just talking about the past and like what happened in the past and never giving you like live future analysis or any, or like substance, then that's a pretty big red flag because you can, I mean, if somebody really wants to, they can go find a million perfect examples and ignore all of the bad examples, right? But you can always find like bad examples that, you know, are the opposite of the good examples. So I prefer to deal with live price action, what is actually happening, where price is actually going to be going and occasionally show you an example in the past where it worked. Okay. You don't, you don't see me sitting here just talking about old examples from the past and then not giving you opinions on what's going to happen. Right. So I've really drawn out today's webinar guys. I don't really have anything else to talk about these kind of these majors, GDP, NZD, Euro, NZD, EJ, Euro, AUD, a lot of these, um, the, these pairs, I'm not in, too interested in trading. That's why I didn't go over. And then all these dollar pairs, I'm not interested in trading. Um, I will mention just one thing with pound yen, just one thing with pound yen guys. And then I promise I'm done. I want to retract my statement that I said yesterday. And I said that I was going to be more bearish than bullish on this pair, but I'm actually just staying completely neutral again, guys, and actually more bullish than, than bearish. Um, and that's because I am bearish on gold. And gold and GJ tend to have a negative correlation. So if we see gold press down, like I think it's going to probably over the next couple of weeks, we're probably going to see GJ um, spike up again, definitely like back up to its highs and then probably go towards like 150. And then, you know, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see where price goes from there. That's where, and some of you guys wonder like, why do I always have these old trend lines on my charts? Because that's where this, like, look at this trend line, guys. I haven't even touched this trend line or really, even cared about it since um since like maybe back in july but i mean before that really the only care was like after may like we haven't really talked about this trend line in a while but look how relevant how quickly it becomes relevant right if you if you just extend this to the right just exactly how it was we'll put it back onto the daily just to make sure just a simple trend line, you know, it's, it's nothing, nothing, nothing like to get super wild about, but there is a very nice touch right there. Very nice touch right there. Very nice textbook touch right there. So pretty decent trend line in that. Now we suddenly have potential upside targets on longs on DJ, right? So everything that I have on my charts, I mean, mostly stays relevant to me, right? I mean, I've got a bunch of these little channels that will never, ever go back to, but for me, I like seeing these because it lets me know that, okay, these happen sometimes on this pair. And if it happens on this pair, this is what we've seen happen in the past, you know, this many times. So I know that if I see a very tight downtrend uh, or uptrend ascending channel over a short period of time, over like, you know, 10 to 15 days, I know that it has a chance of breaking out in a strong direction. Okay. Um, so yeah. I mean, I, I don't really have a, a huge bias. I'd say more upside than downside because I'm bullish on gold, but my, just my, my same philosophy for this whole past couple of months of GJ remains the same. If we stay above 148, okay. And what, and when I, when I mean stay above, I'm talking outside this structure guys. So I'm talking above this and below this. So outside of this zone around 148, let me, outside of this zone around 148 as long as we stay above this zone if we break out of this zone we're going to keep going higher if we break the support of this zone we're going to definitely retrace back to 144.50 at least okay now the tricky part is getting that entry right because ideally we'd like to get an entry you know more, more conservative side is wait for the breakout wait wait for the breakout wait for the retest and that's definitely a viable option but if we want an, a, a super good risk to reward, if we want like a one to 10 or one to 15, one to 20, some crazy high risk to reward, then we want to look for an entry inside this range. But 
I personally am more of a conservative trader. I don't always need that one to 10, one to 20 risk ratio, right? That, I mean, that means if we're talking about risking 2%, you're going to make 20%, 40%, you know, some big, big, big returns on your trade. And you don't always have to be that greedy. Um, we can look for, you know, one to three is appropriate, one to four, one to five, um, even a one to two here and there is appropriate. But all I'm getting at guys is just, just know that if it's above this zone, we're looking for some, some big buys. And if it's below this zone, we're looking for some big lows. But if we do see everything continue to, to pan out, like we have, like, let me, let me just show you guys one thing. And then I'm done. Like look at gold and pound yen, right? They don't look the same, obviously, right? But if we're looking at just their recent move, right? Recently, over the past couple months, we've seen GJ spike up, have a big rally, and then recently consolidate. So if we say that gold does the opposite, that, then that means in the recent months, we need to have seen gold go down and then consolidate. And what's happened? Exactly that. Gold has gone down the past couple months and is now has consolidated. Right, a lot more consolidation than pound yen, but nevertheless, they have a negative correlation to each other. And if we do see gold go down to 1150, then you better believe that pound yen is going to break 140 or 150 and probably go even higher than that. But I don't think that's super relevant because I'm not interested in getting into it right now. So just recap guys for this week, keep watching G, uh, GBP Swiss franc. I'm going to watch for opportunities to re-enter Euro GBP. Uh, we aren't in this trade yet, but I am definitely looking for opportunities to enter based off of a retest off of this 50% retracement level. And we're looking for it to go down to the 61.8% retracement level. As far as that's concerned, guys, I mean, the dollar does look bullish. It looks like it's going to keep going and it probably will next week. And obviously the next couple months will probably keep going. And yes, it's going to suck, right? If NFP tomorrow is really good for the dollar and we do see dollar index like spike up and we do see everything continue in their directions, but that's a part of the game, right? There's no sense in gambling on something that we don't have really high probabilities on. That's the whole thing with trading, guys. Every time we enter a trade, we're looking for high probabilities. And with, with NFP, that's pure more 50-50 gambling. That's not really an edge, right? If, you're, if you have some insider market knowledge and you, you, you're, you're friends with somebody that works at a bank and they've already got those numbers, hit me up, right? Hit me up and we'll have a chat. Um, but but it, there's not, nobody in here that knows what the numbers are going to be like. So there's no way we can predict an edge and the forecast has nothing really to do with what the actual numbers is going to come out. Okay. Oh, wow. They have an ad alert now. Do you guys remember the other night? It wasn't showing me any of this. I was trying to add an alert on the charts. You guys remember that? I was trying to add an alert and now it's, now it's actually working. That's, that kind of sucks. Um, but okay. Um, that's it guys. I'm so, I'm done for the week. Uh, we've had a really, really good run this week in some nice profits. Let's, let's keep it going. Um, I'll see you guys on Sunday, 8 PM Eastern time, like normal for the weekly outlook. Let's keep killing it guys. Let's make October and November and December. Let's make these last three months, double digit return months. If I can smash out 10% returns on this month, next month, and the end of the month, um, I am going to be a very, very happy person in I mean, the way the markets are looking, guys, I think that it's possible, okay? So 30% between now and the end of the year. That's what I'm aiming for, guys. You know, if we do 15% this month and 10% next month and, or 5% next month and 10% the next month, I'm still happy with that. But 30% in the next 90 days, that's what I'd like to see. That's what I'm going to go for. So um, let's, let's stay focused, guys, and let's just keep grinding. All right, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Don't forget the book is still available for pre-order guys. I got about 70 something copies left to pre-order. So on November 1st, I am going to be sent, sending out books. I'm actually working something I've been working on for a while. Well, not, it wasn't officially going to be a book. It was more like a trading. I guess it was going to be a book. I mean, uh, it was going to be like a guide, I guess, but kind of turned into more than a guide and turned into a book. Something that I've been working on for a while. So that's going to be, I'm going to be shipping that out November 1st. Uh, when I do release it and publicize it everywhere, um, I'm going to be charging about 300 bucks for it. Um, it's something that's obviously I've put a lot of time into. It's something that's going to be physical. It's not a digital copy that you download. It's a physical book that gets shipped to your house and you can take notes on. Um, but it is 50% off while I have some pre-order copies available because I don't want to order more copies or too many more copies than what are pre-ordered. So, um, if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. There's a ton of you guys. I think most of you guys on here have already pre-ordered it, but, um, yeah, 
if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll see you guys Sunday. Have a safe, relaxing weekend, guys. Go have some fun with your family and um, have a great weekend, guys. Take care.